Better Software Design to podcast o projektowaniu oprogramowania. Wraz z moimi gośćmi rozmawiamy o architekturze, szczegółach implementacyjnych i wyzwaniach z tym związanych. Jeśli interesujesz się tworzeniem oprogramowania, to ten podcast jest właśnie dla Ciebie. Zapraszam na odcinek. Pewien czas temu, gdy zaczynałem przygotowywać się do nagrywania tego podcastu, opracowałem sobie listę tematów, którymi chciałbym gdzieś tam zająć się w kolejnych odcinkach, czy to samodzielnie, czy z moimi gośćmi. I oczywiście na tej liście dosyć wysoko był, był oczywiście event storming. I, I prawdę mówiąc planowałem nawet rozpocząć nagrywanie tego podcastu właśnie od event stormingu, no z racji też moich takich zawodowych zainteresowań i bliskości do tej, do tej techniki. Natomiast bardzo szybko przyszła gdzieś taka refleksja, że może to nie jest jednak dobry temat na, na, na sam początek z wielu powodów. Sporo rzeczy gdzieś tam udało się zebrać w repozytorium Awesome Event Storming na GitHubie. Z Maćkiem Anisarowiczem w DevToku numer 110 też mieliśmy okazję porozmawiać na temat podstaw tej techniki, więc jeżeli ktoś by był zainteresowany właśnie takimi podstawami, to ja gorąco odsyłam do, do odcinka numer 110, do Maćka, do DevToku. Tam można posłuchać sobie naszej rozmowy. I w planach też było nagranie odcinku podcastu DefEnf, gdzie wspólnie z, z ekipą DefEnfa chcieliśmy popatrzeć jeszcze na inne aspekty event stormingu. I to wszystko spowodowało, że gdzieś ten temat event stormingu gdzieś tam zszedł na tej liście priorytetów na dalsze, na dalsze plany. Ale jednocześnie patrząc na to, co się dzieje obecnie w naszym świadku IT, no głównie spowodowane przez koronawirusa i COVID-19, tym tematem chciałbym się zająć raz jeszcze, ale troszeczkę z innej perspektywy. Jedno z najczęstszych pytań, które gdzieś tam trafia ostatnio do mnie, czy to na Twitterze, czy w mailach, czy na LinkedInie, jest pytanie, czy event storming da się zrobić zdalnie? I dokładnie to pytanie chciałbym dzisiaj rozpracować na czynniki pierwsze. Ten odcinek będzie różnił się troszeczkę od tych poprzednich. Dzisiaj moimi gośćmi będą dwie osoby. Będzie to Alberto Brandolini, twórca stormingu, no bo gdzie by można zasięgnąć lepszej opinii na temat zdalnej wersji tej techniki, jeżeli nie u jej twórcy. Oraz osoba, której rozpoznawalność w Polsce chyba nie jest tak wysoka, jak być powinna. Będzie to Jacopo Romei, którego miałem okazję spotkać w Bolonii dwa lata temu na Event Storming Summit właśnie u Alberto, gdzie wspólnie z innymi osobami staraliśmy się wymienić doświadczeniami na temat stormingu, zagłębić troszeczkę się w tą technikę i zobaczyć, czy nie można tam jeszcze czegoś doszlifować. Przyznam się, że gdzieś tam w ostatnim czasie dosyć mocno czekałem właśnie na artykuły, na, na blog posty od Alberto, w których miał opisać swoje doświadczenie właśnie ze zdalnym stormingiem w czasach koronawirusa. I byłem bardzo ciekawy, jak on odniesie się do też tego artykułu, czy też może części książki do tego rozdziału, w którym opisywał zdalny storming. Osoby, które miały okazję przejrzeć Introducing Event Storming to Alberto, pewnie pamiętają, że rozdział o zdalnym event stormingu to zasadniczo pusta kartka, w której zdaje się, znajduje się tylko i wyłącznie jedno zdanie. Ten rozdział został tutaj pominięty celowo. I chciałem też zobaczyć, czy jakby bieżące doświadczenia i, i możliwość zasadniczo tylko i wyłącznie zdalnej pracy z ludźmi, z zespołami, nie wpłynie znacząco na jego ocenę i na jego ogląd sytuacji i na możliwość zastosowania stormingu o, w, różnych, w różnych wydaniach. Chciałem też porównać doświadczenie moich dzisiejszych rozmówców z moimi własnymi doświadczeniami i praktykami wyniesionymi z wcześniejszych sesji modelowania zdalnego i to na poziomie big picture i na, na tych niższych poziomach stormingu, czyli na sesjach procesowych i na sesjach modelowania oprogramowania. Czy jakieś może tips and tricks od nich nie udałoby się gdzieś tutaj podpatrzeć i zastosować na kolejnych, na kolejnych warsztatach? Tylko moje wcześniejsze doświadczenia z zastosowaniem, wykorzystywaniem tej techniki w takich sesjach zdalnych, ono było podyktowane może nie taką sytuacją epidemiologiczną, jaką mamy obecnie, ale bardziej czynnikami ekonomicznymi, gdzie po prostu nie opłacało się organizować sesji i ściągać wszystkich deweloperów, cały, całego przedstawicieli biznesu w jedno miejsce gdzieś tam w jakimś punkcie czasu. Po prostu czynniki ekonomiczne mówiły, że tym razem to się po prostu nie, 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 nie zepnie. Ale bez zbędnego już przedania zobaczmy, co Alberto ma w tym temacie do powiedzenia. Okay, so hi Alberto, how are you? Hello, all good, all good. Yeah, locked in the house, but all good. 
<laughs> Yo, Alberto, you are known as an event storming inventor. So, you know, right now there is a huge question in the air about the remote session. And this is this is a topic I would like to discuss with you because uh, recently you've wrote the two articles and uh, you've got some experience for running the remote session. And uh, I would like to talk how we can work and collaborate remotely in COVID-19 times. So this is my first question. How we can start to collaborate in a remote way? Well, <laughs> it, 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 it's weird because uh, uh, what the question was in the air, I actually didn't like the question before before the pandemic spread. And um, but then, uh, okay, a few things happened and then we had to get into plan B action. And it was so tough for me that I actually had to write two separate articles, one about remote event storming in general, and one if you are in forced remote because of, yeah, health, uh, uh, healthcare reason. And um, so I'm, I'm not I'm not discussing uh, anymore like, wow, well, I think you still should try to do it uh, uh, in the in-person version. Well, remember, I remember also you retweeting like, uh, well, just grab a planned ticket. This is not viable anymore. The game has changed. We, do, we need to do something different. At the same time, um, one thing is we don't have only one workshop. It's just like even storming is a family of workshop with different purposes. And some of them can work remotely. Some of them uh, can have a harder life. And let's say big picture was the one that needed to have 20, 30 people in the, in the same room. And this now looks like, oh, that's illegal. You're going to go to jail. And um, at the same time, that was the workshop that was delivering most of the value. Um, but it, it was working on some... Uh, um, little like uh, we could deliver in the time box of one day and uh, we could deliver more that the participants were expecting and uh, doing it doing that thing remotely well we can deliver something but a lot of things will be slowed down and so it, my current stand is just like uh, for a big picture even storming well, a few companies might still need it. Actually, we, we've been doing it on ourselves. We've been using this format to redesign some business line. Like uh, we have a training business. We need to redesign our training business in order to work remotely. We started exploring all the different pain points that happen at different stages. But, okay, we are the company that has most expertise in the storming on the, on the planet, I guess. And uh, <laughs> and so we had to try. And, uh, and it was working and it was... Uh, but it was based on the fact that we already know each other. We already have been doing it in Stormings before. The interaction was good. And uh, and we could also do it in two, three di days if needed. Uh, but one of the things is just like uh, for any online session, you cannot spend the whole day online. It's just like uh, people would like to commit suicide after a few hours. So the whole day in a room as a workshop, it is doable because you have oxygen, you have free food, and there is some chit chat and uh, human side that pops in. But the whole day in a video conference or a, on, a, on a mirror board, no, please, that 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 is not doable. It's asking too much for uh, for my brain, and and that's that's uh, that's uh, that's the main thing. So that was a pessimistic start. The optimistic start is in uh, well, most of the workshops are still in the other. A uh, bunch of just uh, or process modeling or software design, and this can be time boxed. This could be productive two three hour session, and um, they could work. Also, they rely on the fact that you're probably doing them uh, doing this workshop with people you've been working before. So um, there's a little bit less emotional discovery involved, a little bit bit more collaborative problem solving, and. Um, Yes, you can go on the, on the on a digital format. You will lose a lot. It, it's funny. Like the first thing that people uh, realize, just like we, we're losing the body language. To be honest, half of the people doing it and storming actually don't really care about the body language. So they, they really care only about the software. And uh, and so okay, you're losing the body language. I was not looking at the body language anyway. And so I'm not not losing anything. Uh, I'm not completely sure about it. Um, there's a lot of other little clues that we might be losing, like uh, um, handwriting, um, the little information which is uh, uh, in a little, a small cluttered board when you try to make things tidy. And uh, if you go on a digital 
format. Everything looks like uh, not even written by the same person, but uh, 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 something cluttered in the real world means like it hasn't been refined. But uh, a virtual even storming, if you follow in the color grammar, something which is just drafted uh, looks as good as something which has been validated. While uh, in the in a real uh, a real world even storming, uh, usually on the second round you start to put things uh, a little bit more squared, uh, tidy, and uh, and you s- you have a visual feedback of the progression of the clarity of what you've been doing. And the digital tools are mi- missing this. Digital tools are pretending to make everything look tidy from the very beginning. And uh, no, this is this is making us blind to some little uh, to some little clues. And uh, not everybody's looking at this, but I was, and I feel like I was not the only one. It was just not a conscious activity. Um, another thing which is really relevant is uh, you have to play with discipline. It's uh, everybody talking about this doesn't work in the reason work in the digital world, but you still have to provide feedback. And so um, a, a few things that we tried doing were... Uh, um, yeah, having the um, temporary responsibility of being the leader for, uh, for another person, but at the same time, this person should not be continuously interrupted. Uh, I mean, the continuous interruption is bad in the real world, um, but it gets even worse in digital. I mean, we, we're not having a remote conversation. We're having a remote conversation on a media, which is adding little delays, which is uh, making your voice more metallic, which is making the listener experience a lot more frustrating. And uh, mm, Daniel Kahneman's system, uh, um, thinking fast and slow, this is system to continuously in, in action, just trying to understand what your colleagues are saying. This is a lot more exhausting when, when it's happening. So um, I would say we should start to try to talk um, close to the minimum and provide visual feedback as much as we can. It might be notes, it might be special red arrows, whatever. But uh, uh, like uh, we use the hotspot in the in the, the real world, um, it, it should be quiet, but it should be visible. But please leave five minutes of uh, free modeling to the um, to your colleague. So far, that's the best combination we uh, we could find, and. Um, and it's not working uh, that bad. At the same time, nobody can scientifically make a comparison. So you don't know how much time will the same problem um, will need uh, for an, in in real life participation. Different formats of event storming because what I see is that many people think that event storming is just a one format. We need to go past three steps, and you know we've got the big picture and the, the process modeling and the software designing uh, workshops and. I can't even imagine how the big picture <laughs> even would like to, to work in remote, in virtual uh, situation, because there are so many things outside the model. You, you mentioned the body language. The other aspect you, you mentioned, what I is really, really interesting for me, is that you need to be focused. And it's not a problem if you are in the offline session. You can interact with people, you can touch, you, you can um, move around the, the, the room if you would like. I remember the, the situation when we were together in, in London on the session. Three days, <laughs> it, it was a blast for me. Right now, of course, we've got this, this COVID-19 s- situation, but the, previously, a lot of teams had some questions about the remote even storming sessions because there are in some scenarios that, for example, the client is on the other side of the globe, and there is no economic uh, sense to put everyone in the same room. Well, I s- still think there was an economic sense have the, to ask the question. And uh, to be to be brutally honest, the, the question about can we do it remotely, uh, it, it, it just pissed me off a lot. It used to piss me off a lot. Now it's more reasonable because it started basically on... Uh, from the very beginning. So I was making my experiment. The experiment was surprisingly successful in, in, in doing things. And then uh, um, it was um, an old colleague of mine working in, in a bank. He talked about the event storming. I said, like, well, that's great. Can you please ask Albert if we can do it remotely? And I was, Come on, you, you don't know what you're talking about. And you're asking me to, to change the idea, do it remotely. And uh, I really felt like, 
Now you don't know what this is all about. It, just like or, be, be, because uh, he, the scenario, the the, the the whole setting creates a space and conversation to happen. And um, so w- one one of the, the the victims here is just like uh, some conversation would would not would not happen. But uh, do we need all of this conversation all the time? Well, not uh, not really. And um, I mean, we can wait. But at, at the same time, talking about the big picture format, um, if your company uh, so, so there is a problem space which is weird now, which is. Uh, now everybody's trying to work from home, and you need to establish your closed room. You need to establish some silence. But basically, these people are sitting all the time in a room alone. That's a good setting for delivering. If I have just to write something or to write some code, that is great. That's not a good setting for thinking. Thinking is still happens better in in a different scenario. Um, I've been brainstorming on. Uh, uh, how to transform my uh, consultancy, my trainings, uh, and uh, and my whole company organization for this remote time, and not a single good idea happened while I was sitting in my computer. So I had to go in another room. I had to play with stickies. I had to, yeah, uh, take a walk in my garden. I had to do something different in order to have a, uh, to have a good idea. Because uh, now the, the thing which is happening is just like we're forcing everybody to be stuck in video conferences. Uh, this is putting our brain in dumb mode. If we know what we have to do, if you are just executing, typing, brain dumping, what we, it's already clear in our head, this works perfectly. But there's a giant blind spot in how to make critical decision collaboratively because now we don't see the problem. We just see faces on the screen. And, 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 and this is just recreating the typical setting of the dysfunctional meeting room with everybody sitting around the table. There is no flip chart. There is only people speaking. We cannot even see what they have, the notes that, that, that they are taking. So the, a lot of what we are doing in these days is recreating the most dysfunctional setting where the most stupid strategic decisions are, are taken. And... Um, I think we can do a lot better uh, in uh, doing collaborative solution exploration, collaborative modeling, and uh, all, all this other stuff. At the same time, there's one thing, uh, if you remember this scenario in London, that was uh, great for me too. Even storming is big. It, it was taking the whole wall. It was overwhelming. was delivering a message. Your top screen is not going to get bigger during a workshop. And, and, and so the, the actual impact of what you see on the brain is still going to be 15 uh, inches. Not You're, you're never going to be in the uh, full... It's just like watching uh, a Star Wars movie at home, in your, in your home screen, or going to the, uh, going to the uh, cinema. It's, it's a lot more impressive if you see a big, great thing on the wall. Yeah, okay. I, I remember the session in London. As you mentioned, the, the room was huge. The model was huge. We had some few thousand stickies around and <laughs> putting everything in the, the small screen. Even if you've got, let's say, 60 inches <laughs> TV screen, the experience will be not, not exactly the same. And you can even take a look on the whole things and, and discover it. Okay, this is a connection from start to, to, to end. And uh, maybe you, you will miss something important. Yeah. It is uh, the square meters of the visible surface it, it is making a difference. I mean, it, even storming was big because we needed all of this space, and this space was conveying the message. Now this message is sterilized. So in terms of uh, triggering a change initiative, I, I don't think that's uh, that's going to be easy. On the other hand, there's a big message all around the planet that we have to change our service anyway, so we don't need to convince people. The, 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 the punch in the face is already happening on some other channels, so it's, it's still a trade-off. But uh, yes, for, uh, for the big picture session, if you badly need it, you can still do something. It just takes a longer time because we cannot do full immersion the whole day and... Uh, but uh, we we are actually doing it. I I just don't think it has a great market uh, uh, as a consulting activity in this uh, in these days. Doable, 
yeah, if you accept the whole uh, the whole spectrum of risk possibilities and little delays, uh, it, it might be necessary because uh, now it. I mean, some organizations are in strong need of rethinking their services. Yeah. Okay. So, so from your perspective, how we as the event stormers can use this technique in in current time? What would be the best scenario? How we can put the event storming in the, in the front line? Do do you see any particular area where there is a yeah there is a still some place where the the, the very you because you you mentioned some some scenarios already, but maybe there are some places where we we, we shouldn't even try to use it. Well. I mean, you can try to use it whenever you want. <laughs> one of, I mean, one of the great things of even kittens will die if you make it, make a wrong session. So, no, experimenting, well, go on. It's still uh, still powerful. Um, as something that you can sell, well, the return on investment is uh, is actually is actually different in, um, in this scenario. But I still think there are places that uh, might need some experimentation. I mean, it might not even be just the even storming, but uh, uh, but even something more uh, more general. I mean, what we are currently doing with collaborative modeling uh, is actually really interesting. Like uh, we are discovering discipline that will al- allow multiple professional to collaborate on something that previously was done by a single person, and then this is my design. Now you execute my plan, blah blah blah. And one of the things that is happening in this uh, in these days is a lot of organization, but also nations and uh, and um, are trying to make decisions around problems which are too complex to be managed by a single specialist. It, I don't know what what is happening in in, uh, in Poland, but uh, uh, the thing that is happening in uh, in, uh, in Italy is just like. Uh, Everybody would like to have one single person to tell the whole story. And this is not happening because uh, you, you, you need economists, you need virologists, you need, uh, um, you need um, uh, maybe people, people in advertising delivering the right message for uh, uh, turning the people behavior in, in, in the right way. A single specialist might not, uh, might not provide all the answers. And uh, for a continuously mutating uh, reality, we need to make quick, deep decision and analyzing really complex scenario, and that, that's very hard to do if you, we don't see the whole whole problem space. And uh, so there's there's something which is uh, which was uh, in the in the area of um, extreme teaming. Uh, there's a, a really good uh, uh, TED talk from uh, Amy Edmondson, which uh, uh, on the topic, which is about uh, how to make specialists collaborate when everybody is a leader in their, in their field, and um, and to solve emergency situation. And uh, maybe it's not as much an emergency as a pandemic, but uh, for a lot of uh, companies and organizations, the new economic scenario is an emergency. They have to redesign things. And uh, this activity could be done, uh, yeah, in the old way, or could be done in smarter ways. So I think I think that that's a space, and there are still uh, things in uh, inside even storming, like the collaborative storytelling, the validation, uh, continuous validation by uh, the different parties, and uh, and the layering of. Um, Thoughts that you can build upon the the previous uh, the previous step that is still still really really valuable. We we actually been doing this uh, this thing on a, on a, yeah on a business line, but it doesn't have to be a business line. It might be uh, how to uh, how to yeah get all the possible feedback about uh, reopening the economy. Um, is what happens in this scenario? What happens? We are in 20 days from now. This is uh, uh, how the um, danger is uh, predicted for this time. And this is how the economy will be. How do we do this? So how would you expect the people behavior to, uh, to be in this scenario? Well, it just helps to uh, make a more plausible discussion. So, yeah, why not? And there's a lot of space in between. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm wondering because... You as an inventor probably gets a lot of requests for the um, session facilitation, uh, as especially right. So, I'm very curious if you had some remote session, let's say in last weeks, and maybe you were 
surprised by something during the session if you had something okay we we had a few um we started eating our own dog food um and uh, one of the things I would say not so many surprises because we were analyzing this uh, a lot before going uh, <laughs> going to action. But uh, but one of the things that was in, uh, let's say, played differently. Uh, so we lost the handwriting, and um, but one of one of the tricks that actually played uh, uh, well was um, okay. Let's uh, let's make sure everybody is uh, writing um, notes in uh, each one with their own color. And uh, don't have the typical yeah orange uh, wall, but a very very multicolor wall with no specific meaning except uh, this is uh, the color of Marius, this is the color of Alberto, and and so on. And um, when we started doing the walkthrough and cleaning up everything, we turned everything orange as long as everything was discussed. And so we had the visual progression of okay, that was multiple voices, and while the oranges were validated i mean changing color of the sticky notes was one of the little things that happens faster in uh, in digital format and the, the the little surprise was uh, how quick it it was to provide the visual feedback of okay now we're progressing and uh, and everything looked like like a multicolor uh, mess and now it's uh, okay progressively becoming orange which means like uh, we're doing we're doing something more and i would say the the visual reward of uh, making progress is something that we badly need because we're going to be a little slower in this um, in this scenario. I had one more question, <laughs> but don't be mad <laughs> on me. But be I, I know that we discuss it uh, before we start uh, the recording uh, of this session. But uh, I, I need to ask about your book. <laughs> Waiting, and there are still some chapters to wrote. So, what is the current situation with your book? Well, a lot of things. So the, the the initial thought was, okay, everybody's gonna be at home, and uh, so I, I might have more time for uh, for actually writing the book. Then the actual situation was a lot different. Like, uh, okay, everybody is having more writing the book. No, um, um, actually, what happened was uh, we ended up working a lot more because we badly needed to redesign our services as a training company, as a consulting company. Uh, to make experiments, so I actually wrote a lot more, and there's a, there's a lot of. I mean, the two blog posts were, um, say, a little minority of what I actually wrote uh, on this um, um, on these uh, days. Um, but at the same time, uh, the, the the book itself. Well, I need I need to have some uh, more settled ground for this because. Uh, in the worst case scenario, putting everybody in the same room would not be viable for uh, maybe a year, maybe more. So um, the, the top priority for helping people who are trying to do uh, a good job might not be, well, a better description of the uh, big P. The focus should be on, uh, yeah, how to do this uh, remotely uh, because of something something is different but in in general the thing that the thing that happened was uh, i started writing uh, a lot more like uh, there's, there's a few more articles coming out uh, about uh, uh, bounded context and alternative ways of uh, modeling them and i'm i'm working on something about uh, chopping down monolith uh, uh, in the, into bounded context without even storming already had a solution using that um, so there's a lot more writing, so expect a lot more uh, content strictly on, on the book. Well, it, it will happen because I have more clarity uh, and, uh, and things to do, but it turned out not, not to be viable. Even, I would say, from an ethical point of view, the message, the, the first reaction was, okay, everybody's at home, we, you can write. Then in practice, like, uh, I mean, the, the world is changing outside. Do I really have to pretend nothing is happening and taking this as a holiday? No, that was not a, that was not a viable strategy. So, um, yeah, still there. Um, good ideas. Content is happening. Content is evolving also because I need to redesign the content for uh, remote classes and uh, and and workshop. Um, but uh, yeah. 
doing the fine uh, fine grain work of finishing that uh, that's that's going to be hard in the in the current weeks as i said we are, we are actually working more maybe getting paid less but uh, we need to redesign ourselves that was a an emergency call yeah okay so i can't wait to read something from from you uh, alberto i would like to thank you very much for your time and uh, just for me stay safe stay safe yeah think about uh, what might happen and uh brainstorm i mean just uh <laughs> don't be sitting the whole day that's <laughs> that that's not going to work <laughs> bye alberto yeah. bye have a great day Alberto poruszył kilka ciekawych punktów i, i, i tematów, które gdzieś tam warto wziąć pod uwagę. Może warto stosować na kolejnej sesji takiego zdalnego, zdalnego stormingu. Natomiast pozwolę się odnieść tylko do jednego zagadnienia tutaj poruszonego w tej rozmowie, czyli do tej książki. I tak myślę, że z perspektywy czasu cała ta obecna sytuacja no, przekuje się tylko i wyłącznie w coś, coś ciekawego, w coś pozytywnego. Może pracujemy jako, jako komunity, jako środowisko, jakieś nowe formy takiego zdalnego warsztatu, które nawet będą zastosowania nie tylko, czy, czy mówimy o event stormingu, czy, czy, czy to jakiejś innej technice, ale może w takiej po prostu codziennej pracy i, i coś dobrego z tego finalnie będzie. Natomiast obiecałem na samym początku dwóch gości i dlatego chciałem jeszcze tutaj zaprosić na odsłuchanie krótkiej wypowiedzi od Jacopo Romei. Jacopo z do dodania w tym temacie. I ta rozmowa, no może nawet nie rozmowa, ta wypowiedź została nagrana bardzo krótko po zdalnym, większym warsztacie, który Jacopo miał okazję przeprowadzić dla swojego klienta, więc to będą takie wrażenia praktycznie na gorąco. Zapraszam do odsłuchania. Hi Marius and thanks for inviting me. Uh, actually I executed a remote event swimming just once so far. Uh, it was actually a taboo before the coronavirus, the COVID uh, crisis. Um, And I executed this, uh, and I executed it together with Alessandro Braga, who is uh, who pushed a lot for trying event storming in remote format with his company's finance team. So basically, it was quite a very non-nerd <laughs> environment, uh, which has pros and cons, as we will see in a few seconds. Um, we used Moodle, not Miro, which is uh, somehow, I, in my experience, it's somehow uh, used more in the event storming community. Uh, we prepared a Moodle template and actually Moodle stood the test of a full day remote modeling experience. Uh, the bad parts. Uh, I think the model you get in the end can be a little bit shallow, a little bit empty, a little bit superficial and And I, I guess, so my proposed fix is to have multiple shorter sessions uh, to better manage the flow. Uh, energy in the room, so <laughs> let's say <laughs> the room uh, is, uh, gets depleted much, much faster in a, in a remote session and you have to take into account this. So I would say it's short bursts and frequent pauses, frequent breaks. So like... 20, uh, like uh, time boxing, basically time boxing like 50 minutes and then you got 10 minutes uh, with people out of the room. Yes, it breaks the flow, but it's better to break the flow on purpose rather than seeing, seeing it break and, uh, and once for all later in the day. Another bad part is that it's basically less enjoyable and it's not just about fun, it's less enjoyable and it means that Uh, there are less chances to extract unintended information. So there is less casual conversation and so the so-called serendipity goes down. It's less likely that you're going to find something that you were not looking for. Good parts, though, there are. Um, persistence is one, obviously. The, the, it's the, was the holy grail of event storming practitioners. So yes, uh, the conversation is more relevant than the result of the conversation, but still persistence is something good, especially if you have to break the sessions in more smaller sessions. Um, I mean, like everything when you go remote, people can gather from everywhere. And this is a key point when we think about inviting the right people in the, in the room. So. Uh, we get access to to all the people that you 
would dream <laughs> being in the you would dream of in the room. Um, then uh, uh, th two or three purely digital features are that uh, in Mural we use the so-called frameworks, which are basically boxes, to identify the areas corresponding to the bounded context, which is very, I mean, it's very useful, very comfortable. You can move the context, the bounded context around, bringing all the posts together with it, and it's very, very comfortable. You can move tons of post-it at once in general, which is a huge friction, which was and it will be a huge friction in my experience with event storming in uh, both in first person facilitation and watching others facilitate. After a while, people get a bit lazy in moving post-it around it. And I mean, this was at least this, it was better than the real experience. And last but not least, pivotal events can be expressed with a classical yellow stripe and grouped, the post-its can be grouped with that with that yellow stripe so you can move the pivotal events uh, without losing their status as pivotal events. So, in the end, my final thoughts are that the quality of a, a remote event storming session depends a lot, a lot, a lot on the quality of the people of the team. And I would say that teams with good, with good emotional and social skills and with a good digital literacy can event store remotely in a very good way, with depth and richness. So uh, basically this also means that the role of the facilitator can be uh, much more or much less important than before. Uh, if, the, if the team is not the right one, then the facilitator has to work a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, also past experience can help. People that had already had uh, real life event storming, physical event storming, can can obviously uh, get a better experience uh, remotely. Uh, my final thought is that we will get back to collocated event storming for sure, but we'll be stronger in the face of those times in which you cannot bring everybody to event storm in the same room. So it was a taboo, it won't be a taboo anymore, it will be a choice, and more choices are always Better. So basically, but this is happening in general. Uh, the digital divide is dropping in these weeks, in these months. And this is one of the few good things of this pandemic, I think. So let's look on the bright side, okay? So that's all. Ciao, Marius. Thank you. I z tymi wypowiedziami od Alberto i Jacopo chciałbym Was dzisiaj zostawić, żeby każdy mógł zastanowić się w kontekście własnych doświadczeń, własnego zespołu, własnego projektu. Czy to narzędzie z własnymi poradami, które tutaj można było usłyszeć, coś będzie w stanie usprawnić? Czy to etapy modelowania, czy to etapy komunikacji, może gdzieś tam da się usznąć coś, coś dla siebie. Dla osób, które chciałyby pogłębić swoją wiedzę i, i zobaczyć, co jeszcze da się z tego wyciągnąć, tutaj bardzo gorąco będę odsyłał do tych dwóch artykułów, które opublikował Alberto. Je można znaleźć na blogu Awans Koperty. One są także podlinkowane w moim repozytorium Osób Event Storming. W report na GitHubie Da się także znaleźć kilka innych artykułów dotyczących właśnie zdalnego przeprowadzania takich sesji. Jest tam także zapis jednej sesji Domain Driven Design Virtual Edition, gdzie Alberto wraz z kilkoma um, uczestnikami przeprowadził taką formę właśnie zdalnego modelowania. No, można zobaczyć jak to wygląda, wygląda w praktyce. Jestem też bardzo ciekawy Waszych doświadczeń z, ze stosowaniem zdalnego modelowania, nie tylko z użyciem stormingu, ale także innych technik, więc także jakby ktoś chciał podzielić się swoim doświadczeniem, to bardzo gorąco zapraszam do tego, żeby gdzieś tam napisać do mnie, czy to na Twitterze, czy na mailu, czy, czy, czy na LinkedInie, tutaj każda forma będzie, będzie dobra. Jestem bardzo ciekawy Waszych doświadczeń, bo też może uda się gdzieś tam we własnym zakresie jakby moich doświadczeń coś tam jeszcze usprawnić. No a tymczasem dziękuję Wam bardzo za poświęcony czas i do usłyszenia już wkrótce. Trzymajcie się, cześć.